Breaking news of the Aurora movie theater tragedy. Suspected shooter James Holmes formally charged just this morning in the deaths of 12 people and the attempted murder of 58 others. You're looking at a sketch just released minutes ago, and in it you see Holmes still there has that orange hair. Our team coverage begins with 7 News reporter Marshall Zellinger. Marshall, you are one of the select people allowed into the courtroom to watch today's hearing. Bertha, half of the courtroom was filled with media, the other half with victims or family of victims. The 45-minute hearing started with the judge sitting down and immediately telling suspected shooter James Holmes he faces 142 counts. Those are 24 counts of first-degree murder, 116 counts of attempted first-degree murder, one count of a crime of violence, and one count of possession of explosives. Now take a look at the murder and attempted murder charges. They're twice the number of victims. I spoke with an attorney, and he tells me there are numerous ways to charge murder in Colorado, and you can charge multiple times. And I just looked at a complaint that was unsealed, and the other, the multiple charges are for malice with extreme indifference to human life. No cameras were allowed in the courtroom this time, but we do have the courtroom sketches. Yeah. James Holmes sat in the chair closest to the judge next to his defense team. His hair was more orange and yellow now, not so much of that reddish orange because the color is growing out. It was wavy and matted down and not curly like we saw one week ago. He said one word the entire time, and that was yes in a deep voice. The judge had asked him if he understood he was waiving the right to a hearing within 35 days again, he said the word yes. Uh, he was shackled at the feet and his hands were cuffed in front of him. He was wearing a red jumpsuit. He was in court for 45 minutes before he was taken away. Uh, one record was unsealed today and that was the federal complaint and it was just unsealed and it details each charge one by one naming the person he's being charged for, meaning the murder of so-and-so, the attempted murder of so-and-so. All 142 counts are listed and we're going to go through those uh, as, as we can print them out now. Uh, one other thing is that the judge has not ruled yet on unsealing the remaining records that the media has requested to be unsealed. That won't be decided until another hearing next week. Reporting live in Arapahoe County, Marshall Zellinger, 7 News. Marshall, before you go, you did spend some time telling us how he looked, his physical appearance, and people have been so fascinated by that. How did his demeanor today compare with last Monday? It wasn't as erratic. Uh, he was focused on the judge when the judge spoke to him. He looked directly at him. When the prosecution or the d district attorney was talking, he seemed to look down and he would sway a little bit side to side in, in his chair. Uh, he whispered a few times, or at least his defense team whispered with him to explain some of the proceedings. Every now and then I saw his eyebrows kind of go up like that and once or twice his eyes went real wide, kind of like what we saw one week ago. But it wasn't as distinct as we saw where he looked sleepy or as some people thought he might have been drugged last week. Uh, it was not that demeanor at all, Bertha. All right, Marshall, thank you so much for your report. We appreciate it. Thank you, Marshall. We bring in now a call of investigator John Ferruja to talk more about this. One of the things, John, that could have come up today is Holmes' mental state. Yep. Uh, that will come up, but it just shows how many things we have to get through first before we even get to that point. Yeah, today was just the charging, basically. You're charging him with all of these crimes. One of the things that Marshall said I thought was very, very interesting, he's charged with, in addition to the murder counts, malice with extreme indifference to human life. Now, that really signals that the death penalty is in play because obviously uh, this is very, very serious charge, just not that he you know, shot someone or killed someone, but it was indifference to human life. Uh, the mental health issue, of course, hasn't come up today. What we're really seeing is is what, what lawyers call the real TikTok. I mean, you're talking about incremental hearings, in, incremental information that's coming out, incremental hearings that we're going to see that are going to go on and on and on. When we get to the mental health issue, there will quite likely be, if the defense is going down this road, uh, uh, a mental health evaluation. That can take weeks. Uh, that can take till the end of the year if uh, if if this uh, if this goes forward. Also, you're really talking about uh, the death penalty. When will that come up? A lot of people have asked. Well, you know, when does Carol Chambers have to say, "Well, we want the death penalty"? That again can be put off for weeks or months, depending on. Uh, a mental health evaluation. As you know, Carol Chambers is term limited. So that means in January, she's out of office. Is she going to want to lock in the death penalty before she leaves? Or is she going to leave that to her successor? Now, 
one can imagine in a case like this, there aren't many DAs who will not, who you would think, would not go for the death penalty, um, you know, just in terms of the evidence in the case, but also just politically, Mitch and Bertha, mm -hmm. you, you know, in, in Douglas County, you're, you're, you're thinking it's going to go for the death penalty. But this is all very, very incremental. This is just preliminary. We've got to, we were dealing with this whole issue today in court as well of, um, of the, the package that was sent to CU. The defense is saying, wait a second, he was being treated as a psychiatric patient. Uh, this package that was sent to the psychiatrist at CU, well, this is, uh, this is uh, protected because, you know, he's a medical uh, uh, patient and this is protected. Therefore, police can't use it. The judge has got to deal with this. He's got to deal with opening uh, the records. Uh, you know, there, there, there are public records, which all of us normally look at, the public has access to. They've sealed all of this. He's going to have to deal with that. CU, in a very, very uh, unusual situation, has gone to the DA because 7 News and other organizations have gone to CU and said, we want to see public information about correspondence you might have had on this individual, which is normally public. CU admitted it's public and then went to the DA and said, but we want it sealed. And so the DA and the, the university got together to seal this information. We didn't even know about that till Thursday. It was really couched in a, in a, in a very uh, odd way. We thought it might have been a subpoena. Hard to detect. Hard yeah. to detect. Yeah. And now we find out that, that CU won't release very public information about this situation, which isn't criminal. It's all, it's all civil stuff. So we've got months and months. Months and months of stuff going on, yeah. Well, okay. you're in touch with many legal experts, John. We've never had a case like this. Thankfully, there, there never has been another crime like this in, in, um, in a theater with so many victims, so many survivors, some still clinging to life. Are these legal experts giving you any indication how long it's going to take to play out? We say months and months. Has anybody hazarded a guess no, estimating I, how long I think I think it's just totally it's unpredictable I mean given the the number of issues in this case the the issues in terms of mental health the issues of uh, attorney not only attorney client but but uh, your doctor client relationship I mean these are very complicated yeah. issues that could take I mean, months to play out. I mean, perhaps be years. Well, yeah. before we even get to the get to the trial part. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's why we have a, a staff of so many working on this each and every day. Exactly. To kind of weed through this for you. Yeah. So thank you, John. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. John. Now, ten of the survivors of the Aurora Theater shooting are still in the hospital this morning. Four of them are in critical condition, and that includes 16-year-old Yusuf Garbi. Family members tell us he is making progress, though. He was taken off an oxygen tube this weekend, and he is able to talk now. Garby was shot in the head. He is recovering at University Hospital. We've seen more heartache this weekend for one of the shooting survivors. Ashley Mosier, whose six-year-old daughter Veronica was killed in the shooting, suffered a miscarriage over the weekend. Ashley Mosier is paralyzed from the waist down now after being shot in the theater. Her stepmother says she already had been dealing with enough. It was because of stress. It was because of trauma. It was, uh, Ashley's been through a lot. Her body was trying to mend other areas of herself. Funeral arrangements are pending for Ashley's daughter, Veronica. Meanwhile, the family has set up a fund at Wells Fargo Bank. The shooting suspect likely won't face additional homicide charges for the miscarriage of Ashley Mosher's baby. According to Colorado law, life begins after a baby's first breath outside the womb. Now, last spring, you may recall, the legislature considered and did not pass a bill that would have allowed charges in cases where somebody hurts a pregnant woman and causes her unborn child's death or injury. We invite you to stay with 7 News for continuing coverage of the movie theater tragedy. You're welcome to log on to the denverchannel.com as well as to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And this Wednesday, we invite you to show your support for Aurora and all of Colorado as part of We Believe in Colorado Day. You can fly the state flag and wear its colors, red, white, and blue, and gold, to show your support. We also have flags you can print out on our website, thedenverchannel.com.